cops with Confederate helmets choked to death a black teenager. Yeah, let's go to the video. I'm tasing him. Taser, taser, taser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, I want to. That was really my mom. Right, grab okay, his yeah. leg. No. Pull it out from under him. All right, here we go. Here we go, buddy. Yeah. There we go. Watch this proves. Yep, yep. Anti shot, baby. Here, here. Give me a Here, just let. let him him. I got shackles. Don't let him yeah, don't get shackles. Um, shackles don't let him in the trunk of the car. I love you. Please. Please. No, we won't. He's okay. He's okay. He's done one. He's. 55, what we have was parking lot. Anti. From the trailer park. Thank you. you John GS21. If you just want to hang yeah. out, I'm going to have one of the deputies get you. Yeah, do you have one? Yeah. I just gave you an over. What do you need? Wait. I like that job. This is one of the ones that here. This story happened a few years ago. There's now an update. That young man died from being strangled. He was hospitalized days earlier for a mental health issue. The officers seem to be aware that he had a mental health condition. Let me give you some more background to this. A federal judge will now allow a grieving family to sue the police officers in the state of Maryland. Members of the Greensboro Police, the chief medical examiner, and others for the death of their 19 year old relative. This happened in 2018. Let's put up a picture of the young man you saw. His name is Anton Black. Mr. Black was 19 years old. He died from strangulation. The police killed him. Relatives sued three police officers who in 2018 tried to arrest Black in his hometown of Greensboro. Let's put up a picture of two of those cops. Former Greensboro police officer Thomas uh, Thomas Webster the fourth, and former Ridgely police chief Gary Manos, and Centerville police officer Dennis. Lannon, all right? Let me give you some background on the arrest. Black, who had been hospitalized just days earlier with mental health issues, when he was diagnosed as bipolar, was initially cooperative when he and his 12 year old friend were called over to the police cruiser by Webster. At some point during their interaction, the boy that was allegedly being kidnapped identified himself as a family friend, contradicting Black's claim that the two were brothers. Webster began pursuing Black, but first he enlisted help from a white motorcyclist who happened upon the scene to join him in the apprehension. During the pursuit, two officers from different municipalities, then Ridgely Police Chief Gary Manos and Centerville Police Officer Dennis Lennon joined Webster's chase. Black ran to his family's trailer and proceeded to get into a car in front of it and locked himself in. He was afraid. Webster took his baton and smashed in the window of the car. After opening the window, he used his stun gun to electrically shock the high school athlete into submission. As Mr. Black, the young man continued to struggle with the three cops plus one who wore a Confederate helmet. Eventually tussled the young man to the base of the family home of the family home's porch and smashed him with their collective body weight for six minutes. And several more minutes after the teen had been handcuffed, he was subdued. He could go nowhere. They still choked him. Shackled, 
the man with the old Dixie on his head held Black's face to the floor and fixed his legs back towards the sky as his mother watched. Janelle Black says the memory of her son being killed in front of her on her own property haunts her to this day. The suit alleges Black's death could have been prevented at multiple points and claims it was covered by uh, uh, covered up by the police. Three small towns and a state medical examiner's office on January 19th, uh, Blake declined to throw out the lawsuit's claims that police use excessive force. So that means the family is free now to actually sue. No qualified immunity here. That means a judge has found what these officers did. There's enough evidence here to say they were acting outside of their scope of duty. Because if they were within their scope of duty, qualified immunity would automatically apply. That tells you what the evidence says in this case. According to the ACLU, Webster's, Webster has a documented history of violence. Talking about the cop. The cop has a documented history of violence and excessive force against black residents in particular. Even before joining the police force, this is a history that Black had known and mentioned to his mother before the conflict that took his life. Still, the Caroline County State's Attorney declined to bring the case before a grand jury, citing the medical examiner's ruling that the teen's death was accidental from sudden uh, sudden cardiac death. All right, so here's what you have: you have a cop who has significant background against black folk violating the rights of black people. Wearing a Confederate helmet, you got a cop wearing a Confederate helmet killing a black suspect in their custody, already subdued. You then have a prosecutor who's unwilling to prosecute citing the cover up from the medical examiner. The medical examiner knew that if I say it's accidental, they will likely not be able to prosecute these cops who are connected to three different jurisdictions. This was a multi-jurisdictional issue. You had multiple jurisdictions involved in the death of this one child. Ms. Dahl, as an attorney, you know the significance of a judge saying, I am going to set qualified immunity aside. You can go after these cops. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I think the family has a very strong case and also civil damages, what they're pursuing there has a lower standard. It's only right. preponderance of the evidence. Criminal charges is beyond a reasonable doubt, which will also make it easier for the family to win in this lawsuit. Now, it's interesting the medical examiner who said it was accidental testified as a medical expert in the Chauvin case on behalf of Derek Chauvin. And after that, there is this push to re-examine the cases where he was the medical examiner. So it's possible they might end up bringing charges against these police officers if they take a second look and, and realize that he was not um, accurate in his findings. And hopefully that will help the family to maybe uh, uncover more evidence as that investigation moves forward. But why were they even trying to arrest him? It's not even clear there was a, um, a crime being committed here. And and. Did nobody on their force have any kind of training with mental health issues? If they didn't, they really need to. He was not threatening, he had no weapon, he was sitting in the car. They could have been patient, they could have called somebody with an expert and, you know, Talk to him or waited it out. I, the whole this whole case from beginning to end is awful, and and I think the the families here will probably end up winning this lawsuit from what we can see so far. Yeah, we're going to stay on top of it, but it's it's important to note that all of these jurisdictions, none of them trained together. They did not come through the academy together. They are not under the same command, and all of them acted the same way when it comes to this one person. There's a problem with policing. There's a problem.